All right, we are moving up to highway speed and uh, I'm not feeling anything that's uh, abnormal. It has yet to vibrate. Whoa, whoa, oh my God. There's like accidents happening in front of us. That one car up there hit that stuff. Wow. Oh, it's this guy's stuff. You failed to secure your load there, bro. Oopsie. 2008 Nissan Frontier pick em up truck, 4 liter V6. Uh, you guys may recognize this truck. I did a video on this a few months ago. Uh, came in for some O2 sensor trouble codes and uh, I found one of the sensors was disconnected. Uh, somebody had replaced it and, and they failed to uh, connect the connector all the way. Uh, we diagnosed our way through it and discovered that uh, it was no longer connected. It is back today for uh, an unspecified, I'll call it, type of complaint. I'm, I'm really not sure what they're talking about. They say that it shakes or stalls or misfires. It was a very, very unclear communication. I, it, it, was, it was immediately lost between customer to service advisor to me. So uh, I, I really don't know do, 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 what I'm, what I'm <laughs> I really don't know what I'm supposed to be looking for here. So I'm just trying to objectively start over, but I'm, I'm, I'm kind of frustrated and entering into angry technician rant mode so I'm just gonna go ahead and, and use YouTube as a, an outlet for me to vent my frustration on this particular car you see if we pull up my tablet device my communication interface between front of the house and back of the house my uh, my complaint says shake when in gear and like a noise at times and that's what it says shake when in gear and like a noise at so, times what we have here is a failure to communicate so let's let's put it in gear and try to try to duplicate a shake while in gear um, I feel a slight vibration here perhaps uh, perhaps like a motor mount type of vibration uh, it's it's very minimal so I don't even know if this is really what they're talking about I've uh, I've pulled up some trouble codes here on the scan tool and uh, the only thing that I have and it's probably only there because that little scanner down there can't erase transmission codes. Um, I've got a uh, torque converter clutch circuit code. Now here it is right here, P0744, transmission torque converter solenoid valve function. So there's something going down with the torque converter. Um, I read a couple bulletins on this and they were stating that uh, poor quality trans fluid can be the cause of that. Uh, I pulled the dipstick out and I did verify that the fluid is kind of burnt and a little darker colored. So what I've done is I've used my vacuum uh, fluid evacuator device and uh, stuck the suction hose down into the dipstick tube. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, suck out some of the fluid. I'll refill it, I'll run it for a while, and then I'll suck it out again and then refill it. The idea is, is to pull out some of that nasty deteriorated fluid, put in some good fluid, and then I'm gonna go and drive this truck and I'm going to observe the transmission torque converter PIDs and see if I cannot actuate or observe the actuation of the torque converter clutch. Now the reason for the angry rant is I don't even know if this torque converter code is causing the symptoms that they're describing to me. You know, I, I'm, I could be going off on a path and I'm over here diagnosing and performing services on a car when that's not even their complaint. That's kind of what I got to work with today, so I'm, I'm going to do the best that I can, but I, I don't... I'm not very confident moving forward to tell you the truth. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, I've already uh, gone ahead and pulled a couple cords out of the trans already before I started filming. And uh, it's been hanging out here idling for about 10 minutes uh, in and out of gear just to get the fluid circulating through. I'm going to go back for round two and suck out some more fluid and then I'll set the level uh, and then we'll go drive it. So having said that, powering down. Okay, let's move that funnel. We'll put our evacuation hose down in the dipstick tube. This is going to be a process. Everything's a process. There. All right, you stay. Let's plug this guy in. Yeah. All right, so uh, we're about nine quarts or well, eight liters 
I don't even know if this has ports. Anyway, we're uh, we're eight liters of uh, fluid displacement exchange through this trans. So let's uh, let's pull this dipstick filler suctioner and uh, refill this guy. Let's set the level and go take it out for for a drive. There we go. Empty this guy out using the gravity. All right, now just for fun, I've taken a sample of that fluid that I extracted in a clear bottle, and it's not looking very good. It's almost got the the hue of motor oil. I mean, you can still see some red in there, but it's clearly discolored and broken down. All right, let's do uh, one more refill here, and then we'll set the level and go for our drive. Now, although I did not take exact measurements on how much fluid is going into this, it will leave exactly full before we hit the road. And I'll show you how we're going to achieve that. Okay, so if we look at our dipstick, we want our full level to be right around the top of the hatch marks. So what we'll do is I'll take my suction hose and I'll line it up and we will follow it along until we reach the stop at the top of the dipstick. That spot right there. Now we will mark that spot with the thumbnail. We'll run this tube back down into the dipstick and we'll stop right at that little mark where I was pinching it with my thumb. Then, we'll fire up the fluid evacuator again, and it will suction out the remainder of the fluid until it has reached the full mark. There it comes. And we're gonna do this engine running because engine running is how we check fluid level. Starting the engine. And as soon as that thing stops sucking out fluid, it's now at the full level. And the exchange has been completed. So we'll hang out here and give this a couple more minutes. Of course, we will manually recheck it with the dipstick. Oh, come here. Gravity, everything gravity. Twice. Butter fingers today. Wrong with me. Okay, returning back to my hose it is run dry. Power down. Just check it with the dipping stick real quick. Right there at the bottom of the marks. I can address that later once it uh, reaches operating temperature. Plus, I think I'll put some additive in here. All right, let's hit the road. Okay, now. Okay, so there's our trouble code, P0744. Let's not forget that. I'm going to clear this code just because I want to know if it's going to reset after we uh, did a fluid exchange. Clear codes. I like to say fluid exchange as opposed to flush. Everybody says, you know, brake flush, transmission flush. And to me, that just sounds like a foul word. You know, you, you flush a toilet, you flush things away. But what we're actually doing is we are exchanging the fluid within the system. That's different than a drain and fill because draining and filling, you're, you're not exchanging the majority of the system capacity, you're just taking out a portion of it and reinstalling a portion of it. And yes, that is similar to what I did here, but I think what I did here is a little, yeah, we'll call it the, uh, the intermediate step between a drain and fill and a full-on fluid exchange. 
where you would uh, connect a machine to it and perform a positive displacement fluid exchange, meaning the machine will take out a certain amount and it will put in the exact same certain amount in line with the way the system flows. And what I did is something in the middle where I took out and replaced more than what a typical drain and fill would, but not as much as what a, uh, a typical fluid exchange would. Okay, trouble codes have successfully cleared. Let's power it down and restart it. We're gonna pull up trans data. Communicating. Communicate faster, please. Don't have all day. All right, trans data one. We're looking for TCC, torque converter clutch. So let's find our TCC PID. Okay, not here. Let's check in trans data two. Hmm, pressure switches, temperatures. <laughs> TCC solenoid amps, TCC slip RPMs. Let's give us some throttle here. No amps. Okay, it appears that the fluid has had no reaction. Uh, now keep in mind, I'm just kind of shooting in the dark here. I don't even know if this is what the problem is, but uh, I'm doing what I can with the limited amount of information that I've been given. Also keep in mind that uh, the last time this was here, I tried to hone in on exactly what we wanted to do with this and nobody could make a decision. So. Um, since no one else made a decision, including the guy that owns the car, I'm making the decision, so this is what I'm gonna do. Don't get mad at me. Okay, it is in this moment that I've decided that I need more scan tool, because this scan tool does not give me any option to uh, command any functions with the trans. I, I can't command the torque converter clutch on and off. I, I can't command any of the solenoids. There's not even a menu for commanding. So uh, this is, a, uh, I'll call it a read-only uh, type of programming with this particular scanner. So I have now decided I need more scanner uh, Not right now, but um, it, it's it's gonna go into the mind I'm gonna I'm gonna have to get something else too. Maybe an Altel something that has a little bit more features I like this one because it's super fast, but um, I have now just found that it does indeed have some limits That being said, let's go for a ride. I'm gonna roll down to the interstate. We're gonna hop on the highway uh, we're going to cruise a few miles, um, we're going to come back up another surface street, and then we'll make our way back to the shop, and uh, we will recheck for trouble codes to see if that torque converter clutch solenoid code has, uh, has showed back up. Alright, before we get started, let's stop real quick and see if we can't uh, feel a vibration. Mm, no. Negative. No vibration. Onward! Now, since this entire operation is... Uh, one big festival of shooting in the dark, so to speak. I'm going to drive this uh, through all manners of driving style. I'll, I'll do it aggressively, semi-aggressively, uh, very passively. Um, I'm going to put the drivetrain through all possible conditions that I can recreate uh, just to try to excite whatever condition it was that was causing that code and potentially causing the customer's symptom, which has yet to be defined. I know I've mentioned that more than once and I'm probably beating a dead horse, but I'm going to keep on mentioning that. Uh, that way nobody can chime in in the comment land about how you're just running off willy-nilly doing whatever you want to someone's car. I'm, I'm strategizing and I'm problem solving here. I will also reiterate a previously mentioned disclaimer that I do not do internal automatic transmission work. I would prefer to refer something like that out to you know the guy that does a lot of transmission work uh, and that's because it, it's it's kind of its own separate animal trans work additionally a lot of the different manufacturers have a lot of different types of transmission designs those require a lot of specialized training on that particular design and it also requires specialized tooling on those particular designs and i'm just not equipped like that uh, whether it be the tooling 
the training uh, or the expertise to really confidently do any type of internal transmission work. Uh, even GM stuff, um, like the 4L65s and 4L60s and 4L80s, uh, things that I'm familiar with that I've spent uh, the majority of my career working on with and around, I still do not like to, to go into those units just because it's not, it's not what I do. You could liken the concept to healthcare. You know, you've got your, your, your physicians, you've got your, your general doctors, then you've got your specialized people. Uh, they know a little bit about other fields within the industry, but they're by no means an expert. So when something comes up in, uh, in the medical field where it's outside of your doctor's uh, realm of expertise, they refer you out to a specialist and uh, they let that specialist tackle that particular problem. And uh, I, I look at automatic transmission uh, in a very similar fashion. It's just not uh, it's just not for me. It's not what I do All right, we are moving up to highway speed and uh, I'm not feeling anything that's uh, abnormal. It has yet to vibrate Whoa, whoa! Oh my god, there's like accidents happening in front of us That one car up there hit that stuff this guy's stuff. You failed to secure your load there, bro. Okay, crisis averted. You know, that one car that hit all that stuff back there, he didn't even stop. He just ran it over and kept going. Anyway, back to the task at hand. Let's do a downshift. Feels pretty good. Went back into overdrive. Let's uh, let's reach down and click it out of overdrive. See what it does. OD off. That responded. OD on. Also responded. Okay. Well, I guess the uh, the scan tool will have to uh, tell us the story when we get back. Okay, we're gonna simulate some real life driving right here by parking and shutting this down for a little while and then uh, we'll restart and go drive it some more while I'm here I'm gonna look at this really nice Corvette and that reminds me you should subscribe to my channel you could own a Corvette like this one I'm not saying I'm gonna buy you one but you could own one and you can definitely subscribe to the channel that's free that right there that's not free that's a hundred grand I want one. I don't even have a garage to put it in, so uh, not right now. Maybe one day when I grow up. Whoa, don't hit the back. Okay, no more screwing around. Real life simulation continues. Uh, let's get out of here. I can't see out of this thing. There's all this stuff in the back. It's for, for painting houses and whatnot. Oh my God, everybody's driving to the same spot at once. Yeah. Onward. Okay, so I know that I started off this video with uh, kind of an angry rant uh, trigger warning, so to speak. And uh, it doesn't seem to be the case now. Um, although I have yet to identify what the customer's problem is, I, I still feel pretty good about what I've done here. Uh, so far, rolling along, we've gone about five or six miles. Uh, I do not have a uh, pending trouble code for that transmission torque converter. That doesn't mean that, that's, that I fixed the problem by any means, but uh, I, I can't find anything that's relating to what they said, what the issue was. Uh, now, whether that was lost in translation or not, um, my, uh, my holistic evaluation of the situation here still is yielding minimal results with the exception of that trouble code, which they have been advised on what to do about that code. Actually, now that I mention it, I don't even think I made it to the angry ranting portion. Uh, so I guess I'll interject that right about now. And uh, I think what that should be is, um, if you are a consumer of automotive repairs, 
uh, please be sure to communicate very, very effectively to your service advisor or your dealership or your mechanic or whoever is touching your car. Communicate the, to them with as many details as possible exactly what is going on, when it happens, what time of day, what you were doing. You know, any details can really help, especially if we're trying to find something like uh, customer states, uh, car shakes or car vibrates or um, car doesn't start. Well, what does that mean? Does it mean it was when you hit the key, it didn't do anything? When you hit the key, did it crank a few times and then it stopped? Uh, does it just crank and crank and crank and the engine doesn't start? There's there's so many uh, there's so many possible scenarios where you can encompass car doesn't start. And what happens is we get complaints or cars will show up on the tow truck for uh, like a no start, for example. And that's all that they tell us. It didn't start this morning. And for for us on the other side of the fence, especially service advisors, you guys, you need to ask those questions. Well, what do you mean it doesn't start? Does it not do anything? Do you hear some clicky noises? Does the engine crank and doesn't start? You know, let's uh, let's get some information here, and that way I can get the necessary information that I need, so I know what path to go down. Because if you tell me it doesn't start then uh, you know I have to test your battery I've got to make sure that that's charged I have to see if it's got fuel in it I have to see if it cranks I have to see if it starts and dies there's so many different avenues of diagnostic that I could go down off just a, a very broad and vague statement of car doesn't start so uh, I hope that helps somebody else out there I hope it helps somebody on the consumer side and I hope that can help somebody on the uh, on the service side of things you guys got to give information and you have to ask questions if you don't have any information because knowledge is power and if I don't have any knowledge on the situation it's ultimately just gonna cost me time and it's probably gonna cost the customer money because if I'm over here testing things left and right and uh, I'm coming up dead-ended all the time you know you, you've you've paid me to learn information that you may have had that you did not communicate. I don't know if that counts as an angry rant or if that's even a rant. Perhaps it's just a public advisory. Yeah, that's that's it. I'm changing the theme of this video. No longer angry rant video. It's This is public advisory video. How to save money by using your words. And you know, that's actually very unfortunate because, and I hate to speak in generalities here, but I think most people don't understand just the basic principle of the machine that they drive around in. Uh, I don't think they, I, I think a lot of folks are just like, I put the key in it and it goes and I put gas in it. And it, little warning lights tell you when to change oil and, and things of that nature. I don't think people have much knowledge at all about how the system works or what the pieces are or just uh, the, you know, the general construction of this piece of machinery. And so when it doesn't work, the vocabulary is not there to communicate uh, to the uh, service personnel what exactly happened. So I think there's a disconnect with regards to the subject. And you know, I'll circle right back to the, the doctor analogy. If, uh, let's say you've got uh, chronic headaches and you go to the doctor and you say, my head hurts, fix it. And the doctor goes, well, what's wrong? And you go, I don't know. You're the doctor. Fix my head. Well, where does it hurt? Does it hurt in the front? Does it hurt in the back? Does it hurt while you're eating? Does it hurt in the morning when you first wake up? Does it hurt after you've had coffee? You know, there's, there's so many factors that can go into a complaint. And if none of that information is communicated to anybody, the, uh, the professional who uh, you seek the assistance from uh, cannot provide you the appropriate and adequate assistance. So, again, use your words, people. Use your words. All right, we are now back in the shop. Let's power this down again. We'll restart it again, and I will do one more code check on this just to see if that TCC solenoid code is rearing its head again. Wake up, scanner. Wake up. And if not, I'm gonna go let the uh, the service guys up front know what I've done, and I will type my story in and catalog that in writing, and uh, we will then relay this information to the customer, and again, attempt to inform them with as much information as possible so that they can make an educated decision. 
Although I, I have no recommendations other than uh, I guess let's watch for this code to show back up in the future. And if it does, take it to the transmission guy and let the transmission guy sort that out. That has been my recommendation with regards to this code for the past, like, what, three or four times this car's been here. True, it's only made it to one video, but it's been here a couple times. And we keep telling them the same thing. So I have to wonder, are my thoughts being communicated effectively to the customer? Or are they not receiving all the information that I am providing to my personnel on my end of, uh, of business here? But I will determine that. This will be my running experience. This will be my running... Why are you not communicating? Angry technician. Begin communicating now. Do it. Okay, it did it. So we have no pending trouble codes stored in the TCM in this car. I'm gonna go communicate effectively and uh, we're gonna see how the situation transpires. Uh, more than likely, I think that our customer is gonna be good with whatever we've done here and they're gonna take it and they're gonna evaluate it and then they're gonna bring it back and then we're gonna check for that code again and then I will reiterate one more time, let the transmission guys fix that code. So I, I think that's what's gonna happen here. But um, we will see. Time will tell. Stand by. I'll be right back. All right, guys. I have received word. We're not going to do anything else to this. Uh, as, as I predicted, the guy is fine with uh, my attempted remedy of his solution. And he's going to drive it and see how he feels about it um, moving forward. Well, which has been kind of the same MO on this truck uh, with this problem forever and ever is he doesn't want to accept the fact that uh, it may need transmission work and it does not go down that path. So uh, you can lead him to water, I guess. That's what they say about horses. Uh, I know this guy's not a horse or anything like that, but <laughs> uh, I've, uh, I've done my due diligence and I can do no more for this fella. Um, so if he still disapproves of how his uh, vehicle behaves, acts, shifts, or, uh, or vibrates or lack of vibrates, um, I, I can't do anything else for him. So uh, like I said, the next step is uh, let the transmission guys have a stab at it. This is not for me. Uh, that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and close this video out. As always, like thank you guys for watching my video. I'm assuming that since you're here at the end of this video that you enjoyed this video. If in fact you did enjoy it, I would only ask of you to communicate that to me effectively by tappy tapping that like button down below. As you know by now, and I say this almost every video, that button is what lets me and YouTube know that I've done a good job here today. And if YouTube thinks that I've done a good job here today, it is far more likely to recommend my content to other potential viewers. That's good for me. That's also good for the other viewers. So again, and as always, thank you guys for watching. And most importantly, don't forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. Bye. Oh, I almost forgot two more things. Subscribe to my channel and buy yourself a Corvette.